Okay, this video is going to show you guys how to use every single product on my product line. I got a question about monomer brushes. Someone told me that their monomer is sticky and slimy when they use it. And they also told me they brush keep getting hard. That tells me that that's a beginner, that's a nail enthusiast who doesn't know product knowledge. So you have to educate yourself by either coming to my school here in Houston, Texas. Um, my website is the name of the school, com, Or you need to purchase my videos. They will show you product knowledge and go into more detail on how to pick up your product and how to keep it clean. But I'm going to go a little bit further and not just show you my products, but show you actually how to use them. So first you want to start off with a white towel on your table. That's just my opinion. I see a lot of you guys using black towels, blue towels, dingy towels. You want your client to see this all white like a spa. Of course, terry cloth white towels are easier to bleach. Of course. So that's why you want to use white towels. I also have two layers of bounty paper towel or any really good absorbing paper towel especially on a full set i use two because it's easier clean up and also when you're doing your full sets of whatever you get your dust and you can flip it over but that's in another video in my master class all right so a good quality thick absorbing paper towel and you want to also use another good quality paper towel which is viva this is just two sheets of viva viva you cannot use cheap paper towels as a nail tech that is why you can't get the monomer out of your brush because you're not getting it out of your brush because you're using cheap paper towels so this is viva that i use to wipe my brush on so when you get your brand new brush and i have three of them a size 8 10 and 16 100 percent kaliski and it's already crimped for you aka pinched okay so now, when you get your brand new brush, it's going to be already, you know, pinched with some product on it. You have to clean your brush. That's in my master class, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now the steps. So get your brush, and you want to soak it in not acetone, but brush cleaner. So get you some brush cleaner, put it in a dapping dish, and you're going to absorb your brush bristles, of course, and wipe it on your Viva back and forth, back and forth. Keep putting it in the brush cleaner back and forth back and forth back and forth till you see your brush softening up and then it's ready to it's ready to use and of course your brush should stay just like this after years and years and years of doing nails because you know product knowledge and how to pick up your product okay so when it comes to your monomer we have size 8 and a size 16. this does not come with your product you can get these from your local nail supply store or online this is a EMA, which is the legal kind, not MMA, and you need to know product knowledge when it comes to this. So this is a low odor. That's what you need, whether you're working at home, salon, that doesn't matter. You need a low odor. Who want to smell out of that odor? And that's why the paper towels come in handy because it absorbs the liquid. So you're not sitting there inhaling and your whole place smelling like monomer. This is a medium setting, meaning it's not going to set too slow and it's not going to set too fast. Okay. More details, of course, in my master classes. Now, when you pour your monomer, you have to put it in a glass container. Because I, at nail school, before I went to nail school, I used to put my monomer in a plastic container. That's all I had. And it was melted. It was slimy. So that's how I know that who messaged me, they don't know about glass. Your monomer has to go into a glass container. And I would suggest you guys get a clean of course, brand new clear container because you need to see your monomer as it get down to at least here. You need to see it so you can get your paper towel, absorb it, absorb that old monomer and put this paper towel in a Ziploc bag. It's gonna help, of course, with the smell. Okay, so you see um, nail tech using a glass container that they can't even see the monomer. They can't see it's changing colors in there. They can't see it's contaminated because it's down here. So that's why you want to use a glass container. So the client see this also, and it needs to be like this with every use. So that's why when you clean it out, you clean the lid off around the rim also. Clients are talking, you guys, so you need to make sure that you are clean. 
glass. When you pull your monomer in here, always, it's a habit, pick up your paper towel if you're gonna use this. Because when you pull a monomer out of here, this is now wet. So that's how cross-contamination happens when you using your skin to do this or to clean your brush. Now this brush is 100% dry, that's why I'm doing this. But you cannot, when you clean your brush, you wanna be able to do that, and I'll show you that at the end. So now, when you open it up, you get ready to do a client, pull it at least halfway. You wanna be able to have enough monomer in your container to put your brush in all the way. That's halfway. Close it back up. So when you get your brush out of your drawer, it should be just like this. So you're gonna make sure you put it all the way in. That's how your brush should look, just like that. And that's how you wipe your brush. Not like this, not this, but wiping your brush is like this. To get the product out, okay? Now, I'm not gonna sit here and do a full tutorial, of course, but this is our pinky, our number one seller. All right, so when you pick up your pinky acrylic, Wipe your brush when you finish. Clean up your nail. Do it again. That is pinky. Wipe your brush like this. Beautiful updated four ounce, this is really more than four ounces. So we had to put more product in here but you're paying for quality, look at the lid. Okay, so this, we have Pinky, we have Lawrence Light, and we have Clear. Now you need Lawrence Light because to do the perfect ombre, which is in my master classes, you need a milky white acrylic. That is Pinky and a little Lawrence Light to make the perfect ombre. So I'll show you how to do ombre, and um, I think it's under my design videos, or one of the master classes, all right? Now, this is the number 16. We have number 10. I need to clean this one because I was rushing. I know I used this one. And you need to know product knowledge. There's a lot of stuff that I can't say here, but you need to get my classes so you can understand what you're doing right so this is our number 10 brush I need to put this to the side like I said and clean it this is our number eight is um, smaller than I wanted it to be but it's perfect if you do on um, toenails and you put acrylic on toenails of course you're not supposed to put acrylic on toenails but I'm not teaching an a and class so you're going to do what you're going to do anyway, so at least do it right. Just simply put in a small amount of product on the toes. So this brush is perfect to do an overlay on small toes. I'm just going to put it over this one. It's so number eight. So you need this definitely in your life. Either you're doing toes or you're doing a short overlay. When you finish using your brush, this is your last step. Wipe it, wipe it, wipe it. Pinch side up, squeeze it to make sure everything is out. And you can tell everything is out because it's not slimy or, or looking like gel. This is a clean brush. Okay, so now we have our gel top coat. It says 30 seconds on the container, but that was a mistake. You need to cure it for two minutes. This is simply too thick to cure for 30 seconds. You have to cap the edges. So when you're doing, after you um, you get ready to use it, you have to roll it really good in your hand. It's really, 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 really thick. That's why they put gel top on it. They didn't put top coat on it. It's gel top. So shake it really good. Shake it really good. Get it warmed up, get it warmed up. You can shake it a little bit, roll it. I keep saying shaking it, but I'm rolling. Rolling it really good. And you wanna put it on in thin layers. When you put it on too thick, it's gonna come up. It's not gonna work right. And as you can see, this is a thick 
thick, thick gel. So I'm going to shake it some more. Because it's kind of cool in this building and it's been sitting, of course, for a while. So I'm just going to keep warming it up in my hand. Shake it really, really good. Now that's better. You're going to start in the middle, flush your way up towards the epinechium area, and simply go around thin layers and cap the edges with the tip of your brush. You have to cap the edges so this won't come up because it will. Cap the edges, just like so. You're going to cure this for two minutes in either an LED or UV. Two minutes. Cap the edges, cap the edges, cap the edges. Super, super shiny. Top coat. Now we have our nail prep, dehydrator, and your primer. Nail dehydrator goes first. After you do your prep, you put this on. It's going to dry the nail out. Some people don't believe in using this. You're going to use it because this is your guarantee. This is your insurance that that client nail is not going to come up as long as you lay the application correctly. You don't have acrylic around their epinechium. So you're going to put this on first. And then put your primer on and then lay your nail application. None acid. It's not strong in odor. So everything, as you can see, looks good, professional looking products. That's how you use nail prep, dehydrate, and primer. Now, we also have sanding bands. You wanna have zebra sanding bands. That's, that way you won't cut your clients. It's a difference. They're not all the same. So you wanna get a zebra sanding band. This is our zebra hand file. That way you won't cut your clients either. You don't have to get this and rub it up against another file because it's sharp like a razor blade. Ours is not sharp. It's already prepped for you. And you can use the 180 side. That's all you need if you know how to do nails by using my master classes. You use the 180 side. And then you only need the 100 side, which is the rougher side, if you file it to take down bulk. All right? So these are the same material. They just made a sanding band out of the material then they made a hand file so these are 100 you get 50 of these in a pack for a very low price and you have a hundred of these now and also remember you need to know what porous is this sanding band and this nail file they are porous items meaning by law by the state of texas anyway and i know a lot of other states i think all of them you have to throw these away so you need to stay within your scope of practice and do what you're supposed to be doing as a licensed cosmetologist or nail tech doing nails. Once you use this out of the, the um, material, it's going off of it anyway. So you have to throw it in the trash in front of that client. When you finish doing nails and using both sides or just 180 side, you, it's going to look all rough and old anyway. The material is coming off of it. You have to throw this away. If you're going to be charging good money, all these expensive prices for long nails, short nails, medium nails, and you don't want to replace your um, items that you're supposed to because clients are catching on, they're smart. So you have to throw this away. Your buffer, this is small enough. I told them to make it small so you will feel good about throwing it away. The same thing, once you break the seal on this, it's, it's porous. You have to throw it away. So once you buff the client nail, and I teach my master classes, you buff up against the epinechium also to get that flawless cuticle look. So use one side for one hand, the other side for the other hand. Throw this in the trash. Once that seal is broken, by filing, it's no longer by law in Texas, of course, in other states, you can't use this anymore. A client can get infected. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can cut the client blood and you filing and exposing the, just throw it away we also have our stiletto tips now these are not the hard spoon tips they came out with the, the material is impossible to file and i only have clear for right now you get 10 of these 
for a very low price. So size zero to I think 10 or 11 come in here. And again, you get 10 of these. So these are the file, uh, the, the stilettos and they're not hard. As you can see, they, they bendable, they have an apex already. So they're not flat out. See that you have your curve, it's bendable. So when you cut it, you file in the sides, file in the side, you shape it easily. It's super easy to shape. And that's your shape by cutting the tip off of a stiletto. You can also use our 3X, 3XL coffin tips, size zero to 11, right? So when you use these, it has an apex, it's not too, too flat out. It's already shaped for you. Okay, so those are our coffin tips. Easy to cut, of course. Foul, if you want a shorter look, perfect. And last but not least, we have vitamins left over. You know, your clients have damaged your nails. Tell them about the vitamins. You can go ahead and get them while they're on sale and charge a few more dollars and send them to your clients while they're there. I'm not bringing them back because they went up on the price. I won't be able to make a profit and send it to you guys for a fair price. So go ahead and get these while you can on my website. And again, put them in your salon and upsell them for a few dollars and send them to your clients. So I'm going to take the price down even lower so you guys can do that. And of course, these are just like any other vitamins. They work. They are super hair, skin, nail vitamins. They work. Really good passion fruit flavor all right so that is how you use our products okay so don't forget when you finish your nail and this um well, I got one more thing to show you guys wrapping your brush right as you can see pinky sets not too fast but it's a fast setting you see it's not grainy it's not a dip powder consistency. It's a kind of a fast setter, but not too fast. So don't get scared. That's why the monomer and this works together. So as you can see, as long as you're working with it, it'll let you work with it. Then when you start working with it, then it's going to set. So we also have color acrylic. And when you're using color acrylic, you don't want to use your main monomer. Say, for instance, this, you pull this in here fresh. You did a full set using pinky clear or whatever you don't want to go in here and use color acrylic because now you're going to contaminate this now this is going to be green that is the issue with you guys also when it comes to lifting and contaminating your client nails you don't need to use this you put this to the side and now you're going to pull monomer in your dapping dish when you're working with colored acrylic Right, so this also is not, it's a fa not too fast setting, but it's a a good pigmented, not grainy, not um not a not a grainy dip powder consistency. Okay, so when you use this, as you can see, really good pigmented, stays where you put it. right another pretty blue color and i do have a red color coming also so i have a whole new shipment of color acrylic coming and um i told them to add a red so here's a blue as you can see i only need a little bit and look when i'm doing the nail right you're doing your nail you don't wipe your brush back on top of wet product you find a clean area that's the issue also with you guys messing up your brush you don't wipe over sticky parts on your paper towel that's why when you fold your paper towel and it gets all dirty and sticky you flip your paper towel over and, if, and your paper towel should not be extremely soaking wet if it is your product um ratio is off as you can see this bounty is dry whether you've done a full set, rebalance, whatever, this should not be wet because you're using a good quality paper towel and you are picking it up the correct way. 
right? So when you finish, especially with color acrylic, make sure your brush is completely clean of that color. Do not, no matter what you see on YouTube or Instagram, put acetone in your monomer or clean your brush with acetone. You're going to ruin it instantly. You need to know product knowledge to keep your brush clean or you can use um, brush cleaner to clean it. And what you need to do is if you like have a lot of product in your brush because you're practicing, you need to put some um, some monomer in here, our monomer, and let and just soak it. So the monomer will eat the acrylic out of your brush, the, the polymer out of your brush and get it prepared. So don't sit here and use a sharp instrument trying to do all of that. That is what's gonna happen. You're gonna have this little part here sticking up, right? So once your brush is clean, pinch side up, press down hard on your Viva and your brush is ready for application. So make sure it's straight. You put it in your in your desk straight up, and that is how you use our products. And when you finish with your dappin dish or your monomer, get way down here again and start looking slimy because of course you're gonna have drops of acrylic polymer in here. So that's why you never fill it up to the top. So by the time you get through using this, it's all the way down here. You get this paper towel and you go in and you clean your dappin dish. You can also use a pair of scissors to keep your hand from getting wet. So you can use something sharp like this and clean your dappin dish. Do the same thing with this. You will go in and clean your dish. Don't forget to clean the rim of it. And I will sit down in anybody's salon with this pretty white, everything organized, and pay top dollars to get my nails done. So I hope this video helped you guys. So please share this with someone. And I appreciate you guys' um, support. When you get through with your Viva paper towel, quick gem, go ahead and put it in a Ziploc bag. Not a cheap Ziploc bag, a good quality Ziploc, healthy um, Ziploc freezer bag. And that'll absorb the smell also in your home and your salon. Then you can throw the inside of that away in the trash can take your trash out at night like you're supposed to you can you can just keep putting wet paper towels in your ziplock bag and let it sit for days you won't smell it as long as it's not soaking soaking wet but never flush this down the toilet or just throw it in the trash bag okay so if this video help you go ahead and purchase something and i thank you guys again from the bottom of our hearts for um purchasing our products so i hope this helped you guys have a great day